So we've already seen that the definite integral is where we don't add that plus c. And today we're going to look at some of the properties of a definite integral. Some of them we've seen already, and some of them should make sense. So we'll look at the first one. If the definite integral is the area under the curve, and you do the definite integral from one value to the same value. In other words, we're just basically looking at a straight line going up, but does that line have any area? No. So the first property says that should be zero, and I hope that makes sense. Okay? We've also seen that we can mix up the values. We can go from two to three, but we had one example where we went from three to two and we saw how it was the same answer, just the negative. So a property is that if you're going from A to B and finding the integral, that's going to be the same as the negative from B to A. Third property, you can break up the integrals. So if there's a point C in between A and B, let's draw a little picture here, some sort of maybe our parabola, Here's A, B, C, A and B and C in between. And if this is the area from A to B, does it make sense that you could split it up and add those two parts together? So the area from A to C, 1, plus the area from C to B, 2, would equal the area from A to B. And just like we saw with indefinite integrals, if you have a constant inside your integral, you can pull that constant out. And finally, again the same as with indefinite integrals, if you're adding or subtracting functions inside, you can find the integrals separately. So the question is, how can the IB ask questions that require you to know the properties where Usually when we solve questions like this, we don't have to worry about the properties because it really doesn't matter, right? We've had probably, you know, integral of 3 over x dx, if I do an indefinite integral, right? This was one where maybe it made more sense to bring the 3 out in front, so you're like, oh, I see the 1 over x, I see that this is natural log, and so my answer is going to be, 3 natural log of x plus c. But maybe you didn't need to pull that 3 out to see that. Maybe you could see that with the 3 inside. So what happens is we get to some questions without numbers that see if we can figure out the properties. So in this question, we're given a bunch of information. The area under the curve of f of x from 0 to 2 is 4. The area under the curve from 2 to 5 is 12. On g of x, it's negative 3 from 0 to 3. And 6 from 0 to 4. Can we use the properties to figure out this one? Well, adding and subtracting means that we could break this up to be 0 to 2 of 3 f of x dx minus 0 to 2 of g of x dx. So that's one of our properties. If we're adding or subtracting, we can break it up. And what's really nice is, I'm going to put a check mark by this one, that's one of the ones we have already. That 0 to 2 of g of x is negative 3. But we don't have a 3 f of x listed. But here, too, we can use the property, bring that 3 out in front. And since we already know that this is negative 3, I'm going to substitute that in right away, just so I don't have to rewrite that whole thing. And now, this was another one that was given. The integral from 0 to 2 was 4, so I'm going to get 3 times 4 plus 3 and find out that this is equal to 15. So here we had to use the properties to figure that out. Okay? So it seems like 
every detail that we can learn, all right, as a mathematician, they say, okay, how can I create a question that requires you to know just this detail? How, what would I have to do to do that? And so this is, these are examples of that. We don't know what the actual functions are, but we know what their definite integrals are, and then we have to use the properties to figure everything else out. Okay, so I'm going to let you try the next four really quick, and I'll put up the answers. Zero to five, we are not given zero to five, but we know zero to two and two to five. And so the area under the curve from zero to five is same as the area from zero to two plus two to five, and those values are there, so we can just add them together. Two to four, we're not given, but we have zero to four and we have zero to two. So zero to four should equal zero to two plus two to four. You can plug in numbers for the ones that you know and just rearrange this to find out that from two to four would be nine. The fifth one uses the properties and it uses your knowledge of transformations. What does f of x plus 3 mean? From our transformations, 3 to the left. Okay. So my question is, is if I have something, okay, let's say from 2 to 5, and this area is 7. And I take this graph and I move it. <laughs> wow. Let's see. Oh, oh, wait for it. There we go. And I take this, and 1, 2, 3 would get me down to negative 1, and 1, 2, 3 would get me down to 2. Okay, this is not quite to scale. My lines don't fit up. But if I move it three to the left, does the area change? No. So what we're going to think about in this one, all right, we're going to think about that translating three to the left. We can bring the one half out in front because that's a property. And so if it's been moved three to the left and it's from minus three to minus one, moving it back three to the right, f of x would have originally been between 0 and 2. And that was one of the ones that was given to us. The area from 0 to 2 was 4. 1 half times 4 is 2. So this is combining something you knew from before into the properties. If I did a part f, I would do Okay. Yes. From here to here. So this is a translation of 3 to the left. So if I wanted to get back to f of x, I would have to move everything back 3 to the right. And so if I go back 3 to the right, that would be like adding 3 to both of those. 
and now my area is between 0 and 2 instead of negative 3 and negative 1. So if the new function is between negative 1 and 3, then the original function would have been between 0 and 2. What happens if the transformation was moved up 1 from 0 to f of x plus 1? Okay? Sometimes students just go, oh, the answer is 4, so I'm just going to add 1 and get 5, and that's a little bit disastrous. It doesn't quite work that way. Okay? But we can use the property like this, 0 to 2 of f of x dx plus 0 to 2 of 1 dx. This one we know is 4. And this is just a regular definite integral. How do you integrate 1? Right, definite integral from 0 to 2. If you work backwards, you would get just x. And then figuring out our definite integral, Plug in the first one, plug in the second one. 2 minus 0 would be 2. 4 plus 2, this area would be 6. Now I'm going to show you a picture of why this works when I have a translation of one unit up. Okay? Let's say I make up a curve like this, and we are currently told that that area is 4. If we shift it up one unit, again, no, I got an idea. If I shift this up, oh, come on, there we go. If I shift it up one unit, would you agree that that area from the blue line up is still 4? And now what do I have new? I have a new rectangle down at the bottom that's been shifted up one unit. This was still 2. Does it make sense that this area is 2? Okay, we saw that by doing the indefinite, I mean, sorry, definite integral right there. But it makes sense when you visualize it as well. And it also should make sense why you don't just add 1 to your answer. 